We need biohazard containers. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Deathstroke and Sinker here with some amazing Stand news concerning Rainbow Six Siege's new DLC that is upcoming on February 9th. That is the Black Ice Rainbow DLC, Rainbow which Rainbow will feature two new operators from the Canadian CTU, the JTF2. Uh, a lot of information has been circling around, a lot of rumors have been going around, one of which is that one of the operators was a female, and I can confirm that the defender for the Canadian CTU is in fact a female, and her name is Frost. Now Frost comes with a special gadget called the Welcome Mat. The description literally says that the Welcome Mat uses a mechanical trap to incapacitate enemies. A lot of people have been speculating and going back and forth on what this can exactly mean, but I mean, two words stuck out to me and they said clearly what this was. One of those words was incapacitate, and that's what people are struggling mostly on. They're saying maybe it slows the user down or renders them immobile, but it's clear that, at least to me, and this is my honest opinion, that by incapacitate they mean it puts them into a down but not out state, otherwise known as the bleed out state. So this should work similar to Capkin's trip mines in the way that when they are tripped or activated that the Capkin's will immediately kill you because they're lethal. Whereas Frost's welcome mat is non-lethal, it will trap you or pitch you into a bleed out state. Now other than her special gadget which is the welcome mat, she also comes with two other auxiliary gadgets which are the already in-game nitro cell and the deployable shield. I think the deployable shield will be very interesting because of the welcome mat. Uh, trap-like capabilities. These capabilities are still in question because you still have the question whether or not it's very visible or whether or not you can hide it with barbed wire. If it's something you should hide behind a shield or in a doorway, maybe in corners. It's it not until we see the actual in-game trap, which is probably a bear trap, a pressure-sensitive bear trap, uh, will we be able to see whether or not or how we can use this against the enemy teams. I would suggest that maybe it's this small bear trap on the floor and has the capabilities of having barbed wire placed over it to obscure the view or if not we should place it behind deployable shields whereas the attackers will climb over it and step onto this trap and you know, spring it. Hopefully another thing is that it's very audible when it does snap so you do know when someone was caught in this trap. Um, and the last question of course that I would ask is how many do we get? I would expect two to three but I'm really hoping for three. That would be really awesome if more say four then that'd also be awesome unless you're an attacker now moving on to her primary weapons we have the super 90 shotgun and the nine millimeter c1 the super 90 shotgun's description literally says that it's a compact 12 gauge pump action shotgun effective as a breach tool and i think that's the most interesting part about it the fact that they emphasize on breach tool shotguns are the most destructive weapons in the game they're able to blow holes completely into walls, they were able to shoot down doors and such, and as such, the fact that they said this one was specifically a breaching tool, or not specifically as a breaching tool, but they put the emphasis that it was effective as a breach tool, does beg the question, why is it so special? Can we spec to one shot uh, the default or the usual barricades, or does this mean that we can blow apart, say, castles barricades or reinforced barricades with one to two shots, or maybe like two to three shots, whichever they may be, um, this would be very interesting to see. The damage is, um, the damage and the stats overall are typical for a shotgun. Nothing really stands out here except for maybe the recoil, which is and seems to be quite high. Um, I will say that this is likely due to the lack of a stock, and it's obvious that they traded off on the stock for increased mobility, as you would when you take a stock off. As for the 9mm C1, this is a variant of the Sterling SMG, and the description literally says a classic submachine gun, close to mid range, slow rate of fire with medium stopping power. And it's exactly that. At a fire rate of 575, this is going to be a very slow firing gun. It is an SMG, so you will have the increased mobility. Um, one thing I did not say with the shotgun, the Super 90, is that the attachments only include a laser sight and the sight attachments, so we won't be able to silence the shotgun and it looks like we won't be able to add a stock to it. Now the attachments for the 9mm C1 also include a laser sight and the sight attachments, which can be scopes of course, but it also includes the barrel attachment, which will likely be a flash suppressor, a compensator, and maybe a suppressor? 
we can maybe see that as well though I probably wouldn't recommend the suppressor because the damage on this is actually quite low sitting at only 30 in damage and a fire rate of 575 this is gonna be a slow firing gun with pretty light damage actually you would expect with the low rate of fire that it would have high damage but this is a nine millimeter caliber weapon so we won't have I guess the higher stopping power is what we're expecting speaking of nine millimeters the secondary for frost is the mk9 millimeter otherwise known as the p35 or the brownian high power this is also going to be a nine caliber weapon which means we can expect the rounds in the magazine to be around 13 and other than that there's not much information known about the mk9 millimeter now like i said there are two operators for this dlc the other canadian ctu operator is Buck and Buck is of course a guy and he's an attacker for the Canadian CTU. Buck's unique gadget is actually called the Skeleton Key which sounds honestly really really cool. The description literally says that it toggles an underbarrel shotgun attachment for his main weapon. This will probably work similar to how Glass's sniper rifle works where you can toggle and switch in and out of a scope. Except in this case it will be an underbarrel shotgun. Named the skeleton key, I guess we can suggest that this thing is also going to be used for breaching walls and doors. Probably not walls as much, but more doors and such. But it also going to have some maybe some combat-like capabilities. I would expect this it's a little shotgun, so I would expect that it is very lethal at close range and should support his primary weapons. Now his primary weapons are actually really really cool. He's coming with the C8 SFW, which is a medium to long range assault rifle that takes the 5.56 caliber ammunition. Both the damage and the rate of fire stats are looking pretty high for an assault rifle. Not anything crazy to be concerned about, but something that looks like it would be very usable. It's also going to have 30 rounds inside the clip, which is pretty average from an assault rifle and also moderate recoil. The attachments will of course include the laser sight, the barrel attachments such as flash hiders, and sound suppressors probably and the sights of course which are probably will be the ACOG, the holographic and red dots. There will of course be no grips for this gun because the underbarrel shotgun will take the place that a grip would go. As for his second primary weapon which he does also have is a marksman rifle. It is the CAMRS or maybe it's cameras. I, I honestly don't know. I've never seen this name before of this firearm so I don't know how you would pronounce it or if you would spell it out. Either way I'm going to call it the CAM for short because it feels nice and comfortable. The description says it's a customizable semi-automatic long range designated marksman rifle and deals high damage. At 52 in damage they are correct about that. It is single fire of course because it's a marksman rifle and actually packs 20 rounds in the clip which is really cool. Um, the attachments for it we can expect of course again the laser sight the barrel attachments and of course the sights attachments. Hopefully we have something with a stronger magnification than the ACOG which would make this very usable. If not, you can always probably put a, a holographic or a red dot sight on it and go indoors with it because you still have that support of the underbarrel shotgun. What I do think is most interesting about this firearm is that the recoil pattern is mostly vertical. In fact, it looks solely vertical. Of course, the recoil pattern is zoomed out a bit much, but you can expect that these shots will be tightly put, grouped together, except that they will jump in just a vertical line. A foregrip would help with this, but because you have the underbarrel shotgun, it's likely that you will not have that grip. One thing uh, he also does have that Frost does have is the same sidearm, of course, because they are in the same CTU. They both have the MK 9mm, uh, which is also the P35 or Brown and High Power. I already discussed that so I won't go more into that. His gadgets do include stun grenades and breaching charges which are somewhat aggressive for him. I'm hoping because we do not know what the armor and speed ratings for either operator are. I'm hoping he's around the medium armor tier which will give him medium speed and I hope the same thing for Frost but her highly mobile weapons doesn't make a question whether or not she may be light. Though, going by visual appearances, they both look like they're the same armor class. I only wonder and hope that they're both medium. Now that is all of the information I was able to grab from the images. Uh, other than that, there's not much else going on except for a new start screen, which you can see on screen right now. Nothing more than just the view from probably some frozen water 
looking up at Shattered Ice and the two operators standing on top. This will likely be applied to all uh, all owners of Rainbow Six Siege's uh, game. This will likely be completely updated via, via a patch and we'll all be seeing this screen soon. Hopefully on February 2nd or if not February 9th. Um, but that's all I have for you guys right now.